In this video, I'll present a proof of theoretical guarantees for the multiplicative weights update algorithm. The multiplicative weights update algorithm is an algorithm that has gained a lot of interest lately because of its wide range of applications, its extreme simplicity, and its sort of online test. You can see more about the applications and the algorithm itself in previous videos I made. Let me briefly recall the algorithm. We have a constant ether. Uh, that's between 0 and 1 half, uh, a set n of options, weight wi given to the different options, a potential function phi which is going to be the sum of all weights, decisions pi that are determined by wi divided by phi, and losses mi that are associated to decisions. And we are going to consider the update rule, the multiplicative weights update rule, that says that wi at the next round is going to be wi at the previous round times 1 minus eta mi. And this is repeated over time. For simplicity, I restrict myself to non-negative cost in this video, as this is sufficient to highlight the key results and the key proof techniques. Now, the major theorem regarding the multiplicative weight subject algorithm asserts that expected cumulative losses after t rounds can be nicely upper bounded by an option's cumulative losses plus a weird term that is proportional to the logarithm of the number of options. This inequality is really remarkable. Even if the constant eta is poorly chosen, we see that we almost retrieve the cost of the best possible decisions p star we should have chosen for all rounds with a multiplicative error less than 1 plus eta and an additive error term that's of the order of the logarithm of the number of options. How could that be? Well, intuitively, any poor option will be given a weight that just decreases exponentially, and this means that we will quickly no longer play it. Thus, the weight associated to such a poor decision will quickly vanish, like exponentially, and that's really, really much faster than all the linear additive costs that we accumulate. Thus, the weight associated to such a poor decision will quickly vanish exponentially, and hence, we will no longer play it. So intuitively, the key here is really the exponential growth or decrease, which will be much quicker than the linear additive cumulative gains that we are interested in. Let us prove the theorem and maybe this will help you. The key idea of the proof is to focus on the potential function. The potential function at round t plus 1 is going to be, by definition, the sum of weights at round t plus 1, which, by the update rule, is going to be the sum of the weights at round t with the multiplicative updates terms uh, that involve the cost. Now notice that each wi is equal to the potential function times the decisions pi by definition of the decisions now. This proves that the potential function gets itself multiplied by a term that's pretty similar to the one that the weights get multiplied by. And so intuitively what's going on here is that the growth of the potential function will be very similar to the growth of the weights. Now, from here, we want to say that the decrease of the potential function will therefore be exponential. And indeed, we can use the inequality. You can see this intuitively with this figure. Or otherwise, to make it formal, you can use a convexity argument. And using this inequality, you can conclude that the potential function will get multiplied by an exponentiated average cost. By induction on t rounds now, we obtain the inequality phi at time capital T plus 1, is at most phi at round 1, times the exponential of minus eta, times the sum of the scalar product between mt and pt over rounds t. In other words, that the sum of all the mti times pti over all round t and all options i. Now we know that phi at round 1 was the sum of all weights and all weights were initialized at 1, so this is equal to n. And then we can interpret this other term here as being the exponential of minus eta times the cumulative losses. But we know that phi at round t plus 1 is going to be the sum of the weights at round t plus 1. So it is greater than each weight. And this inequality is 
Very interesting because it's going to be almost tight if there are not so many weights that contribute to the pontificial functions that is most irrelevant weights have just vanished and we are just almost comparing things that are almost the same. And because of this exponential decrease, these terms are going to be fairly comparable. Now by induction, these weights are the product of multiplicative terms, each of which includes the loss associated to the option around t. That's how weights are defined. Now, we can use the inequality 1 minus eta to the power x, smaller or equal to 1 minus eta x. Once again, you can use a convexity argument to get this result. And applying this yields an upper bound that includes an exponentiated cumulative loss that corresponds to the option. Now, if we combine it all, we obtain that n times the exponential of minus eta times all cumulative losses is going to be greater or equal to the potential function at round t plus 1, which is going to be greater or equal to 1 minus eta to the power of the cumulative losses. We are almost there. We can now take the logarithms of both sides, yielding log of n minus eta times all cumulative losses is going to be greater or equal to log of 1 minus eta times the cumulative losses of option i. We then do a little bit of algebra and this yields all cumulative losses is going to be at most minus 1 over eta times the logarithm of 1 minus eta times the cumulative losses of option i plus log of n divided by eta. To conclude, it now suffices to use the inequality minus log of 1 minus eta is going to be smaller or equal to eta plus eta square for eta in 0, 1 half. And this is something you can visualize in this figure and you can use a convexity to prove this formula. And there we have it. We obtain finally the inequality of the theorem QED. Now to conclude, I need to say that there is a more general version of this theorem where the cost needn't be non-negative and I strongly encourage you to go through the excellent research survey by Aurora Hazen and Kale published in the Theory of Computing 2012 and which is very easy to find online. I put a link in the description.